from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Opening statements in Hunter Biden's federal gun trial start today. I'm Jared Hill with a show of support from the First Lady and a rare statement from President Biden. I'm Jonathan Ambarian in Helena. With just one more day left before Montana's primary election, almost 200,000 ballots have already been turned in. I'll have a closer look at the turnout so far. And helping kids in Butte gain access to books. We're going to meet a man who has found a way to do this in a small way. Alrighty, we are coming up on 6 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. Jane McDonald and Matt Elwell yep. with you. One of my favorite things. I love how bright that sunshine is at uh, 6 o'clock. Yeah, I think if you have uh, children that tend to wake up with the sun, that oh may boy. not be quite as much fun. No, probably not. Yeah, so good morning <laughs> to all the six-year-olds that are yep. awake because the uh, shades were left open last night. All the infants That's out there. Right. <laughs> uh, temperatures uh, early in the morning, not bad. We're seeing mainly 40s. We do have a couple of 30s. It's warming up out toward West Yellowstones. We're getting a a little sunshine already. I expect today to see more cloud cover and a lot of wind. There are some spotty shower chances today, but I don't expect much uh, out of that. And we're talking drips and drops, and that's about it. Right now, mainly clear. We do have some clouds in our skies. Windy conditions for the afternoon. We're trying to warm things up, and I think as you get later in the week, these temperatures really take a nice run into the 80s. We'll talk more about that 80s flashback coming up in just a little bit. All right, looking forward to it, Matt. Thank you very much. Now, our top story this half hour. A woman was gored by a bison in Yellowstone National Park this past weekend. The park says it happened near Storm Point Trail, and that's near Indian Pond east of Fishing Bridge. The woman was airlifted to a hospital in Idaho with serious injuries. Park officials say the bison was defending its space when the woman came within a few feet of it. Reports from the scene say the animal lifted the woman about a foot off the ground. Now, as soon as we hear more or any latest in this developing story, we're going to give it to you online and on air. But first, on the national scene, opening statements begin today in the federal trial of Hunter Biden on firearms charges. Hunter Biden is the first child of a sitting U.S. president to face a criminal trial. Yesterday, a federal judge sat a jury of six men and six women. Four other women were also chosen as alternates. CBS News' Jared Hill has more from New York. This morning from a Delaware courtroom, opening statements in a federal firearms case against the president's son, Hunter Biden. It is not often, if ever, in American history that you have the son of a sitting president of the United States being charged with three federal felonies and standing trial. Hunter Biden has pleaded not guilty to charges that he illegally bought and owned a handgun while addicted to or using drugs and to making false statements by not acknowledging his drug use on a federal form when he made the purchase back in 2018. A plea deal that would have averted the trial fell apart at the last minute last year. I've made mistakes in my life. Prosecutors are expected to use Hunter Biden's own words from his memoir detailing his history with drugs as evidence as well as text messages and images from his laptop. Expected witnesses include Biden's past romantic partners, ex-wife Kathleen Buell and Halle Biden, widow of Hunter's brother Bo. This is going to be an exquisitively painful ordeal for Hunter Biden. First Lady Jill Biden spent her 73rd birthday yesterday in court with Hunter during jury selection. President Biden released a statement saying in part, Jill and I are going to continue to be there for Hunter and our family with love and support. If convicted, Hunter Biden could face up to 25 years in prison. Jared Hill, CBS News. And the first prosecution witness in the Delaware case is expected to be an FBI agent who will describe Hunter Biden's text messages. Hunter Biden also faces federal tax related charges, including three felony counts in a separate case that's set to go to trial this September in California. He has pleaded not guilty in that case as well. Now back in some church or state headlines, almost 200,000 Montanans have already turned in their ballots for today's primary election. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambirian has a closer look at the trends that we're seeing for voter turnout. Election offices across Montana, including the one behind me in Lewis and Clark County, closed their late voter registration period at noon on Monday, so no new absentee ballots will be handed out. But many voters kept coming by the office on Monday afternoon to turn their absentee ballots in. As of Monday morning, the Montana Secretary of State's office reported election officials have already received 188,000 absentee ballots. 
That's just under 42% of the nearly 450,000 ballots sent out across the state, and already 25% of the 753,000 registered voters in Montana. Almost 19,000 more ballots have come in since Friday. Jeremy Johnson, an associate professor of political science at Carroll College, says the numbers so far indicate fairly strong interest in the primary, especially for a year when the presidential race isn't contested. We've known for a long time that Biden will be the Democratic nominee and Trump will be the Republican nominee. So to get to 25 percent already, um, I think is, you know, it, it, it's a decent showing and we may, you know, we'll definitely see more votes be coming in here. Except in 2020, when elections were all male, turnout in presidential primary years has ranged from 33% to 45% since 2000. In November 2022, more than 280,000 absentee votes were cast by the day before the election, 37% of registered voters. That general election ended up with total turnout around 61%. Because of a state Supreme Court ruling, Election Day voter registration will be available at county election offices on Tuesday. If you still haven't turned in your absentee ballot, you'll have to return it in person. You can bring it to your county elections office through 8 p.m. on Tuesday. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. And votes are already being counted in Butte as officials prepare the Civic Center for today's primary election. Election workers spend Monday counting more than 5,000 absentee ballots while the floor of the Civic Center was being set up for in-person voting today. Those who have not sent in their mail-in ballots yet need to fill it out and drop it off in person today at the courthouse before 5 in the evening or at the Civic Center before polls close at 8 in the evening. Butte election officials say they are expecting a shortage of election judges, so voters are asked to be patient. Voters, I want them to please trust the process. Um, we have lots of experienced people here who um, want to make sure you get the chance to vote. So any issues that come up tomorrow, we're willing to try to resolve them as long as they meet the law. Butte has a few contested races in the primary, including four candidates seeking the chief executive office. And once every decade, Montanans vote to audit the form of their local governments. Recent controversies within Bozeman's city government are top of mind for some advocates who are pushing for yes votes on the audit. On Tuesday, Bozemanites can vote to pay for a commission to study the current way the city government is structured. An advocate with Bozeman Tenants United, Emily Lachelle, is fighting for affordable housing. She told us some citizens feel uninformed by city government leaders. Lachelle also says there are frustrations about former city manager Jeff Mihalik, who was seen in a leaked video disparaging his colleagues and ranting about the community of Bozeman. That happened back in January. I've been hearing a lot of the really deep hurt and anger from sort of the drama around the last city manager. I think this is a time where Bozemanites get to be architects of changing what the city looks like rather than being bystanders and I think everyone can agree that something needs to change and it's worth taking the time to dig our hands in and make that change to be better represented. If the vote on June 4th goes through, changes would be slow moving. Candidates will be able to file for the five seats on the study commission for the November election. After that, the committee would have two years to review the charter, study other forms of government, and suggest recommended changes before any final proposal would be placed back on the ballot. That vote likely would happen in November of 2026. And the Beartooth Pass was predicted to open in its entirety, but to traveler surprise, was closed at the Montana-Wyoming state line. While many still traveled up to the gates, our Kelsey Boggs found that they were disappointed in the lack of communication from the Department of Transportation that never announced the closure at the state line. After a few weather delays, the Beartooth Pass finally opened on Saturday. You can now drive all the way to the Montana state line. It's different every time you come up here. A must-see Montana staple. What can you say? I mean, it's, it's stunning. The Beartooth Pass was named an All-American Road and is said to be the number one motorcycling spot in America. It's full of breathtaking views and wildlife. We saw a black bear with two cubs. Connecting Red Lodge to the northeast entrance of Yellowstone National Park, stretching 69 miles and climbing to more than 10,000 feet above sea level. If you haven't driven it before, you really need to because 
it's such a treasure for both Wyoming and Montana. The highway typically opens the Friday of Memorial Day weekend and closes in mid-October, but this year was a different story. After winter weather, complicated travel. The road's opening was delayed May 24th. Instead, it partially opened from the lower gate to Vista Point that day. But then, on May 28th, an avalanche caused damage to the roads, requiring repairs. It was then forced to close again to Vista Point until May 30th, and then on June 1st, was supposed to open entirely. But when travelers got on the highway Saturday, they were shocked to see it was only open to the Montana state line. <laughs> you guys got up here bright and early, 8 a.m., yes. when it was yep. supposedly supposed to open. What right. happened? We sat and had coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but that didn't stop Grace VC and her dad from making the most out of their day. The 13-year-old did some backcountry skiing. It was her first time attempting this intimidating slope. Cut high into the trees and come. When you got up the top there and you looked down, what did you feel? Well, there's no going back, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to hike back, so I have to go down it. VC and others are looking forward to traveling the pass in full, whenever that may be. We come back like every weekend. When do you think that they will finally open the road all the way? Um, we have no idea. Hopefully, hopefully later today, maybe, or tomorrow for sure. Reporting on the Beartooth Pass, I'm Kelsey Boggs for MTN News. Thank you very much, Kelsey. And a brand new free little library is giving Butte kids more access to books just in time for summer. Our Megan Thompson speaks with the Butte man who spearheaded the project. Well, take a book, share a book. That's the motto of the Little Free Library, and now Butte has one of its own, located here, right next to Butte High School. Part of the grant process was determining that this is a bit of a book desert in this part of the town. We are uh, lower than average income with people that need to be able to have access to these type of services. Doug Ingraham and other members of the Butte Kiwanis placed the Little Free Library on Utah Avenue, located near a housing complex and Butte's homeless shelter. He says the free library facilitates opportunities for children who might not have access to new books. It's important that they can find what inspires them so that they can move on to be inspired. The free library is currently stocked with a donation of 1,000 brand new books from a roughly ten dollars to $12,000 grant from Scholastic Books. What does a book do for somebody? Well, it's something tangible that they can hold in their hands. It's something that they can, they can share, they can trade. It's something that they can own. It's something that can tell a story about them or it's something that can bring a new world to them that they didn't know. Along with the Little Free Library, Kiwanis supports another library near Kennedy Elementary School, and they plan to add another one on the flats. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News. And I mean, getting kids reading, especially in these summer months when, you know. Yeah, we kind of we kind of have a slide on our what we remember during the during the summer. Exactly. So I think school, it's a yeah. great opportunity. It's really good. love that little library. Now, before we head into a break, over the weekend, Matt, did you see the photos of the moose that was popping around yeah, Bones? Yeah, how cool was that? I mean, something that, of course, in Montana, we're kind of used to seeing mm, sort some of. wildlife around our neck of the woods. But over in San Francisco, here, kitty, kitty, uh -oh. that's a big cat. Yeah. Oh my gosh, huge mountain lion caught just outside of a suburb over near San Francisco, just prowling through a little checking, alleyway. Checking for something. Sure, checking to see, you know, when the Golden Gate Bridge is going to open. Yeah, I or, you think know, that's what it was looking when for. When the full house, when he can get into there, maybe, yeah. I don't know. But it was sure shocking. That to, is a little scary. To the people that were getting the little ring, ring notification yeah. that there was some movement out there. Uh, of course, police department, you know, their local wildlife animal control trying to locate this guy. They still don't Good know luck. where he is, but exactly. I think maybe he'll see you before you see yeah, it. Yeah, it's usually the case. For I those think big so. Cats. So good luck to those people trying to find that cat and I'm sure that cat is well on its way to be back home. Now we're going to head into a break, but before we do, well, today is primary election day and voters over in Butte will have four chief executive candidates to choose from. MTN's John Amy is going to break down those candidate profiles. Chief executive candidates in Tuesday's primary.